All right. So I think we're ready. I think we're ready to start Advent of Code 2023, day four. Who's with me? Day four, scratch cards. The gondola takes you up. Oh, good. So we got it working, I guess. Strangely, though, the ground doesn't seem to be coming with you. What does that mean? You're not climbing a mountain. As the circle of Snow Island recedes below you, an entire new landmass suddenly appears above you. The gondola carries you to the surface of a new island and lurches into the station. Neat. As you exit the gondola, the first thing you notice is that the air here is much warmer than it was on Snow Island. It's also quite humid. Is this where the water source is? The next thing you notice is an elf sitting on the floor across the station in what seems to be a pile of colorful square cards. Oh, hello. The elf excitedly runs over to you. How may I be of service? You ask about water sources. I'm not sure. I just operate the gondola lift. That does sound like something we'd have, though. This is island to island, after all. So we went from snow island to island island. Sorokia says some brave souls will do this in Excel. Yeah, and I, I know somebody who does it in SQL, and there's a whole bunch of, you know, take take the challenge to the next level kind of thing. It's always interesting to see that. Because, you know, you, you know they're having fun and it's kind of clever when they come up with a solution. But it's not something that you would willingly do, right? He's on a different island, though. The small kind surrounded by water, not the floating kind. We really need to come up with a better naming scheme. Tell you what, if you can help me with something quick, I'll let you borrow my boat. And you can go visit the gardener. I've got all these scratch cards as a gift, but I can't figure out what I've won. The elf leads you over to a pile of colorful cards. There you discover dozens of scratch cards, all with their opaque covering already scratched off. Picking one up, it looks like each card has two lists of numbers separated by a vertical bar, a list of winning numbers, and then a list of numbers you have. You organize the information into a table, your puzzle input. As far as the elf has been able to figure out, you have to figure out which of the numbers you have appear in the list of winning numbers. So the numbers here have to appear over here. The first match makes the card worth one point and each ma match after the first doubles the point value of the card. Okay, so two to the N, basically. Um, boom, 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 boom. In the above example, card one has five winning numbers and eight numbers you have of the numbers you have, four of them are winning numbers. That means the card is worth eight points. Oh, okay. So two to the n minus one. Got it. One for the first match and then double three times for each of the Yes. Two to the n minus one. Understood. So this is worth 13 points. Okay. So the question is, how many points are they worth in total? Let's get my puzzle input. 2023, day four. Ooh. So we have 204 cards they all seem reasonably reasonable we can just split i mean we can ignore the card number right because we don't care about what the card number is um so we can just split on this and then split by space uh for for each of the numbers right let's set up the template as one does oops four there we go Four. Uh oh. Uh, somehow I jumped to the top there. Mutt day oh four. I had to find the cursor. All right. Let's create the file and jump to it and fill it in. Oh, 2023 day oh four. And then this should be unsolved, unsolved. And it is. Very good. All right. So we have the puzzle input. So we just need to read it, parse it. Each card is going to look like this. It's going to have the numbers that are winning and then the numbers that are that you chose. Okay. So let's make a card. Struct card. And here's what I'm thinking. We could just throw these in a hash set and then do the intersection and then count them. And then it should be, it should be straightforward, right? Let's find out. 
winning numbers. And I always do I64s and then chosen numbers. I set I64. Ruben, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Glad to have you here. And this is all we need to do then is create all the cards. It's just going to be a vector of cards. That's it. Parse should be easy. Let lines equals AOC lib. Read lines. Um, input 202304.txt. And we can say for line in lines. And this should be a string. And so let's take out the stuff before the colon. Nums equals line split once on colon space, unwrap. And then we'll split into the winnings versus the chosens. Let win chose equals nums split once on vertical bar, unwrap. And then we should be able to split all of these guys up into numbers. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, let winning numbers equals win split on a space and then map that string number into parse i64 unwrap and then collect into a hash set, right? And we do the same thing for uh, chosen numbers. And then we can just say self cards push card winning numbers, chosen numbers. Oh, I can't do the completion. My completion isn't working right now. Why not? I gotta figure out why not. Is that all we need to do? Oh, you haven't imported hash set. Okay. Is that all we need to do? Oh, I'm not using chose, right? Chose. Thank you, Russ. That would have been a bad bug. Uh oh. Uh, line 30. It's empty for some reason. Why is it empty? Um, oops, what are, oh, I, I put an extra um, quote there. That was dumb. Oh, 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 uh, we have double spaces and the split will split. Okay, so this should be split white space. DV, hello. Hakuma Matata says it's not necessary to parts, uh, parse to I-64. And Talgobit says, no, but think how much fun you can have with I-64. Oh, yeah, loads of fun. I, uh, Hakuna, I, I, just, I just use I-64 by default on this thing because sometimes the numbers get a bit large and I just don't want to deal. <laughs> um, there. Okay, so now we've parsed everything into cards. I think it's just a matter of, whoops, uh, going down here. And we can just throw it in here, right? Self cards, iter, um, map, card, score, sum, I64, right? And then we just have to write card score. We have to score the cards. DV says, why do we buy the latest laptops if we're not going to use I64? Exactly. Exactly. So impl card uh, score self returns an I64. And the score is the intersection, the count of the intersection minus one raised to this, um, uh, two raised to that power. So we can say let count is equal to self winning numbers. So I still, why can't, why isn't the completion working? Intersection. Yeah, I broke something. This should work. 
oh well, uh, with self-chosen numbers. It was working the other day, and then we just do a count, right? And now we have a count, and I think that's a U size. No information available. What's going on? Oh, I'm, I'm sad. Oh, because I forgot to do something here. There we go. Oh, that's probably why it wasn't code completing, because I had a syntax error. So Roke says, my LSP does it some, sometimes. Yeah, it happens, right? But I think this was because I had a bug uh, or a typo. All right, so we have the count. If the count is greater than zero, then we're going to return um, count minus one, two to the power of count minus one, otherwise we'll return zero. Right? And we have a number. How long did I take? I should have started a timer. Maybe I could have gotten on the leaderboard if I started this at midnight. Let's see what we got. That's the right answer. Brilliant. All right. I think I think we have everything we need to do. What does Clippy say? Oops. Let's do Clippy here. Oh, we have Clippy has a problem with yesterday, but not with today. Okay. So let's let's commit this. Um, get status. Get add source. Get commit dash m 2023 day four part one. And let's fix um, day three. Oops. Let's fix this one. 117 doesn't like this because, oh, I don't need to, it's already a, a ref. Got it. Git commit dash am clippy. All right, let's go back to run. And now let's take a look at part two. Just as you're about to report your findings to the elf, one of you realizes that the rules have actually been printed on the back of every card this whole time. There's no such thing as points. Instead, scratch cards only cause you to win more scratch cards equal to the number of winning numbers you have. What? So I guess, what's the point of doing the scratch cards then? Specifically, you win copies of the scratch cards below the winning card equal to the number of matches. So if card 10 were to have five numbers, five matching numbers, you would win one copy each of cards 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. The Khaled, thank you for the follow. I'm assuming that's a Doctor Who reference. Copies of scratch cards are scored like normal scratch cards and have the same card number they copied. So if you win a copy of card 10 and it has five matching numbers, it would then win a copy of the same cards that the original card 10 won, 11 through 15. This process repeats until none of the copies cause you to win any more cards. Whoa. Cards will never make you copy a card past the end of the table. Okay, I think I understand. The college says, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cards will never make you copy a card past the end of the table. That's, that's good news because otherwise, um, that would be annoying, right? Because I'm thinking what you do is if we see we win a bunch here, we can just create a new array saying, okay, we're going to multiply, um, our card score. Right. Oh no, we don't care about the score anymore. This is how many total scratch cards do you end up with? Huh, okay. Let's take a look then, part two. I'm gonna do this using a for loop to start out with, and then if it makes sense, we can make, try to make it functional. The score, is going to be not what we want anymore. We want the count now. So let's extract this as a separate function. All right, let's pull that out. Oops, put it there, self, without the extra dot, do that. And we can just say self count now. All right, that shouldn't change our first answer. Yeah. Isaac, double zero. Thank you for the follow. Um, so we just need to get each one of the counts. So let's, but each one of the cards, so if we win, let's say we win two cards on card one. 
that means, or we win two points on card one. So that means two gets doubled and three gets doubled. We get two of two and two of three. And then we have two twos. Right, and this is saying if you win a copy of card 10 and it has five matching numbers, still you get another set of 11 through 15. Okay, so let's say we have three wins on two. That means three, four, and five get one, it would get two added to them. So however many cards there are, get added to the number of points you won for the values below. Okay, all right, so let's just keep track of all that. Um, how do we want to keep track of all that information? We can say um, the multiplier is vec of one u size semicolon self games len, right? So they're all initially just one. And then what we'll do is we'll count how many cards we, how many matches we got using this count function. And then we'll add our count to all the subsequent cards. I think that's all we need to do, right? For, oh, I said games. I'm thinking of yesterday, cards. For card in cards, uh, self cards, we get the count. And then we'll say for, Oh, we need to know the index. Um, index card in self cards iter enumerate. So for i in index plus one through index plus one plus count, we're going to add our self to the multiplier. Mul there, now it works. Okay i plus equals multiplier of myself. And now we have to keep track of the card total. Oh, and we don't have to keep track of it. It's all going to be stored in multiplier, right? So we can just say our output is multiplier um, it or sum. Right? I think they're all u sizes, yeah. Is that all we need to do? Is it that simple? Well, no, apparently not. Oh, card count. Um, I guess that seems reasonable. 6.8 million. Yeah, there you go. That's the right answer. That was surprisingly easy. Um, unfortunately, that's all I have for today. <laughs>